Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome to the first episode in a brand new series, Crusader Kings 2. You might have already seen the short series, well short in terms of number of videos, uh, the short series of videos I've already done on Crusader Kings 2 which are designed to be more of a basic tutorial for people who have never played the game or people who are very new to the game. And that tutorial was from the point of view of someone who has only just started playing the game just to prove that it's quite quick and easy to pick up the basics. However, we didn't get an awful lot of play done during those videos. It was mainly me just talking about stuff. So I've decided to just go along and start a game and we'll put what we've learned into practice. What I've decided I'm going to do is play in my uh, in my home county. So we'll go, go ahead and start a single player game. Uh, I've got all of the DLC um, purchased and on, including Charlemagne and Way of Life. However, I've disabled Sunset Invasion because that does make the game a lot more difficult. Not at the beginning, it's more of an end game problem, but it's not really a historically accurate thing. It's more of a fantasy scenario where the uh, western coast of Europe and England get invaded by the Aztecs uh, towards the end of the game. Never happened in history and it just makes the game a lot harder than it needs to be. So, we're going to go in, we're going to start a new single player game. Uh, we're going to go into the custom game setup here. We will be starting in uh, 769, the Middle Ages. We're going to start as early as we can. And uh, what I'm going to do, going to be playing over in the United Kingdom. As you can see, there are a few different uh, areas around. We've got uh, Mercia and there's Northumbria there, and Powys and Essex. What we're going to do, I want... I, I can't play as the Count. What I'd like to do is play as the Count of Leicester. Leicester's my hometown. Uh, unfortunately, we can't play as the Count of Leicester because there isn't one. Well, technically is, but the Count of Leicester is also the Duke of Leicester. So what we're going to do is we are going to be playing as the... It says the King because it's the, uh, a cl classed as a petty king uh, in England at the time, not actually a Duke. Um, now, there is a King of Mercia... I would say that it's mercy is the entire area. So it's all of this area in the sort of blue and yellow uh, blue and yellow borders. So we're going to go ahead and select Leicester. Now, as you can see here, it's got a difficulty rating. Difficulty always has a base score of 50%. And then for every vassal you have, it reduces the difficulty. And then depending on how small your dynasty is, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So if you were playing someone who was absolutely... Um, uh, massive in terms of power someone like the you know the king of france then it becomes quite easy if you're playing as like a, a one province minor it does become much more difficult but what we're going to do is we're going to play as a duke of leicester and i'm going to hit this button here which is the ruler designer. I didn't really talk about this before. Uh, what this allows you to do is you can change a few things of your character before you start. So this bit here is all basically appearance. You can change your gender. Obviously, that's not really appearance because that does actually make a difference. Um... Obviously, we want to play as a male. You can manually adjust uh, how you look using the various controls here. Um, none of these are going to look anything like me. I can pretty much guarantee that. Um, so we'll just try and find one guy that doesn't look um, completely insane. That one will do. Uh, we could mess around with it. Coat of arms. We could go and change this coat of arms here. I uh, don't think there's a random button for it. You can. There's a lot of. Um, there's an awful lot of customization options for these uh, for these coats of arms and I don't really know what we'd want to change it to we could just do something really really basic it really doesn't matter all that much and you can change the slots around not sure if there's anything here that that really suits ah that'll do I've just completely messed up the the coat of arms but that's fine but the most important thing is over here in our attributes. So we start at the age of 16. The maximum is 50. And there are a few things that we can change. We can go ahead and change the name. So let's just um, call him Unstable. And we'll change his dynasty just because it's easier to follow it. So we'll call him Voltage. We can choose whether or not he's married. Now, everything that you change, obviously changing the, uh, the uh, name doesn't do anything, but Anything that you change can theoretically adjust the age. So if I click married, it instantly puts him up to 18 because it's giving him an advantage or a bonus. If we look at the education, it's currently an amateurish plotter. If we were to change that and put it up to an elusive shadow, it instantly puts the age up from 16 to 28. So anything that you change that makes you better increases your age. Now, I do want him to have a fairly good education. 
I'd prefer him to either be a grey eminence, which would give him really high diplomacy, or make him something like a brilliant strategist, which would give him really high martial. Now, both of these are going to be important to the number of troops we can control, but I like having a lot of diplomacy, so I'm going to go for grey eminence. Now, that's instantly put us up to the age of 30. Now, we could go in here and mess around with some of these stats, but as you can see, every time we put one of these up, it actually increases our age. Now, we can also change our health and fertility, whether we've got sons or daughters. Again, every time we add something, every child adds a couple of years on to our age. We're not going to mess around with that. We could add on health, but of course, adding on health also re uh, increases your age. Now, we can go into the traits down here. And if we bring up the traits window, there's a number of traits. Now, some traits will actually knock years off of your life. So if we were to choose the leper trait, for example, it would knock off 66, which puts us on minus 60. Uh, it puts us on 16 because you can't go below the age of 16 and still be a ruler. Now, obviously, that gives us an awful lot of negative things that we don't want to have. So I'm just going to remove it. But it does mean if you pick some of these things, like you can pick Wounded, for example. Wounded gives you minus one health, minus one mar martial, and minus one combat skill. But it would knock 11 years off our age. And it would be a great way to actually make our ruler a little bit younger. So that's how the character creator works. Everything that you pick either gives you a penalty or... Um, a bonus but it will also increase or reduce your age so we could go for something like airlip which would give us minus one diplomacy and uh minus 10 attraction opinion but it would knock four years off our life not going to mess around with any of the um the traits so for now we're just going to go in as as we are we've got relatively decent martial skill and a good diplomacy skill so we're going to hit the finish button we are ready to go let's go ahead hit play and get in there so here we are, we have started, and we've already got a relatively decent amount of uh, land down here to begin with. A um, couple of places down here, we've got, for example, this is our vassal. He's the Earl of Bedford and the Earl of Oxford. He owns both of this place, these places here. Uh, we have a domain of three. We've got Leicester, we've got Gainsborough, which is in Lincoln, and we've got Northampton. Now, ideally, what I want to do is have all of my... Um, domain in the same duchy if we just go and have a look at the du jour duchies here and we can see that the duchy that leicester is in which is the petty kingdom of mercia because that's essex yep yeah. so it's basically leicester warwickshire and worcestershire these are the ones that i want to try and get and i don't have any of my holdings there for the time being so we will have to go and sort that out so everything within the blue and yellow lines basically is um well, it basically belongs to us, not these ones down here, though. Uh, so we are going to have to go and um, try and take some of this stuff from other people. But let's go through the alerts at the top and see what we've got. So we need to pick a character focus. This is part of the Way of Life expansion. Now, the character focus not only gives you um, some of the... An increase to certain things like you know intrigue gives us plus three intrigue seduction gives us plus two intrigue and plus 25 fertility and plus 10 sex appeal but at the same time um it also allows us to to try and seduce people um if you pick the hunting ability it allows you to go on a, on the great hunt and improve your martial skill if you pick the theology um traits the focus it allows you to go on a pilgrimage and increase your um learning so some of these do have a little bit more of an impact i think we'll go for hunting um we would like to obviously go for family as well because we don't have a wife yet and we need to have a child we might go for family first and then go for hunting later you can swap it every five years so that isn't a problem that selects our family focus there we also lack an ambition so the first ambition we're going to choose is get married because that's a nice and easy one to do uh, our domain is too big i appreciate that but i'm not going to change it just now because having um a wife with a high diplomacy skill may allow us to have a larger domain so we're unmarried we definitely want to try and go ahead and find a wife one with a high intrigue would be nice uh, but as would one with a high diplomacy now we could look around and see we could end up getting married with somebody in um, Greece or somebody quite far away it's not necessarily the best thing to do we have a look down the list and see if there's anybody that we would like to get a alliance with there are some people down in um, Lombard which would be quite nice we could even try and marry a princess there she's got a relatively decent uh, intrigue skill 
Um, of course, we could marry the uh, the Greek woman there, and that would give us um, 14 on the side of diplomacy. Wouldn't be the most useful marriage in terms of an alliance, though, have to admit that. But at least she would be the right religion, so that is fine. Uh, is there anything else that we would prefer to get? Of course, we could try and find someone who had... Uh, like the genius trait or the quick trait, and maybe we could have some children that uh, that that would pass down to. That's always a problem. I can't actually see one at the moment. Yeah, so pretty slim pickings, it has to be said. Let's go for the woman with the high diplomacy because she's got quite decent martial skill as well. So we'll go and um, we'll pick her. Now we would be marrying a courtier if we did this, so we'd lose an awful lot of prestige. That's the only problem there. So maybe that's not the best option to pick. Um, let's just go again and have a look at that. Let's sort by rank. So hopefully we can find somebody who is... Yeah, we're not going to have an awful lot of options here. Even though we've got some people who technically are princesses, but they don't hold any land. Um, you're not too terrible, I suppose. You do have a relatively decent Diplo score. Um, you are gluttonous. You are brave. You're also kind. You're a tough soldier, but you are deceitful. Uh, we would actually gain prestige for doing that, though. And it would give us an alliance with Lombard, who are basically down here. So let's go ahead and do that. So that means we can now get married. Um, title loss on succession. And also, we've got this important thing here. No heir to your dynasty. If the ruler dies now, the game will end. So we do have to be careful there. So just before we unpause, we'll just go and appoint all of our people. We need our chancellor. We need our marshal. He's quite good. He's got a 16 marshal score. We also need a spy master. And we're going to put these people where they will be the most useful. So let's have a quick look how much our vassals like us. Um, they all do. That's uh, not too much of a problem. Um, they may not like us a lot, but they certainly uh, do like us. That's the county of Warwick. Um, he has the biggest portion of forces, so he might be the best person to suck up to. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to take our chancellor and improve diplomatic relations in Warwick. Our best... Um, sort of holding for troops is in Leicester, so we are going to put our marshal on training troops in Leicester. As far as collecting taxes go, we get slightly more from Gainsborough, so we're going to get our steward collecting taxes in Lincoln. Our spy master can stay in Leicester for now to uncover any plots. And if we just go and have a look at the bishopric in Leicester, I love how it says the city of Nottingham in Leicester. Surely in Leicester it should be the city of Leicester, but never mind. And we have the bishopric of Newstead. And how much does this guy actually like us? Let's just go and have a quick look at him and um, see how this guy likes us. So he only has an opinion of 15 of us, but he has an opinion... 52 of the church so he's not giving me any money at all which is a shame so we could try and suck up to him as well so for the time being we're going to get our uh, chaplain to improve the religious relations in leicester let's just have a quick look and see if there's anything that we can we've got any claims on uh, apparently we also own um kent down here as well which is um ah we don't own kent itself but for some random reason we own one of the duchies here? Or one of the um, dukes here swears fealty to us. It's not you. It's not you. Okay, this one's got quite... Oh, I should be looking at that flag there. Yeah, it's this one here. The Kingdom of Mercia. So, this bishop... I, he, I'm actually his liege, even though he's in Kent. That's quite a strange one. Uh, but it does mean that uh, we've got a fair bit of uh, fair bit of power here. So let's go ahead and we will unpause the game. And we will go up to a slightly faster speed. Now, like I said, we are over our domain limit. I'll wait until the uh, marriage goes through before we try and sort that out. So I appreciate this first video. We've not got an awful lot done. But at the end of the day, there was always going to be a certain amount of setup on the first video. Uh, but for the rest of the uh, series, I am not going to be going through extremely fast. Because the purpose of this series is to still try and teach other people how to play. And also 
so I can learn what I'm doing as I go through. So I will be talking about what I'm doing, but at least we're not going to have the game paused all the way through. So we've got married. We've got the option. We can either gain one gold, which isn't an awful lot, or we can gain 100 prestige. Let's have that 100 prestige. That's fantastic. So now we should have an alliance if we hit three or E even. We can see, uh, let's just get rid of that. Uh, we fulfilled the ambition to get married. Uh, you can see down here now we have this blue area because we're now allied with Lombard. I mean, they're a little bit far away to be helpful in a war or anything like that. We can pick a new ambition. So we're going to choose the ambition to have a child because it will increase our fertility and give us a, a better chance of getting an heir. Obviously, we'd prefer to have a son. So that's what we're going to select. It's possible that our wife could end up with the same um, ambition. And if she does, uh, that would increase her fertility as well, which would be great. We are still over our domain limit, which is a little bit annoying. Um, because of our stewardship bonus. Now, let's have a quick look at laws. There might be something that we could change here. Uh, one thing that we would definitely like to change as soon as we can is changing the uh, type of succession law. Because under Gavelkind, if you have multiple children and um, you're ruler dies then your stuff is kind of split between the children it would be much nicer if we could get something like primogenitor where it goes to the um the sort of the oldest son so what could we do to try and increase our domain size um well centralization would help a little bit uh, we could go to um low centralization that would give us plus one to our domain size and it would give us um, it says plus 5 to our vassal limit, but it's current. our vassal limit is currently plus 10. So we have 26 vassals, but we, we're only using 3 of them. So let's go ahead and change to low centralization. And what that will do is it will put our domain size limit up to 3, and it will reduce our vassal limit down to 21. But that's fine because we'll be well within, the, uh, well within the realms of acceptability there. So title losses on succession, basically everything that we own is a potential title loss simply because we don't have anyone in our dynasty that these titles will pass on to if we should happen to die. And we already know our domain is too big. So let's have a quick look at the intrigue. Is there anything here that we could enact? Um... See, so we've got hold of some affair, we've got hold of feast. If I'd have picked the hunting, um focus we'd have the option to go on a great hunt as well uh, what we will probably do is we'll hold a summer fair as soon as it gets to may that'll give us a little bit more prestige it could be useful it's going to take a little while for that law just to pass so that we can get the domain size we can check on it actually we can see that six of the um 16 uh, vassals have voted on it still waiting a little more they will as time goes on uh, let's just go up to speed three there's no point sort of um, waiting around. We may even end up going a little bit faster than that. Uh, we have the option for an arranged marriage here. This is between the King of Pickland, which is basically uh, Scotland, or the majority of Scotland up here. And he wants to marry um, his Chancellor to someone who is in my court. Might as well accept, no reason not to. So, as I've said, the main purpose of this um, video series, what I want to do, my, my goals, is to found the Empire of Britannia. So, what we're going to need to do is, first of all, we're going to need to take all of England, because we need to become the King of England. And we also need to take Wales, and become the King of Wales, and then at some point become the King of Ireland and the King of Scotland. You don't need all of that to become um, Britannia. Uh, if we actually go and have a look... And we just turn on du jour. You can see that um, we already have the Petty Kingdom of Mercia, which, remember, is, is the Duchy of Mer Mercia. So we already have the Duchy of Mercia. And we uh, the Duchy of Mercia is part of the Kingdom of England. And it's also part of the Empire of Britannia. If we click on the Empire of Britannia, and you actually see if we mouse over create, it says we need to hold at least two kingdom titles. So we need to be... King of England is, is pretty much a given, and then King of Wales is most likely what we will end up with after that. So let's go ahead and unpause and hope that they eventually... Um, get that law through open a list of opponents so there are some people voting against it uh, we could go ahead and give them some some more money and try and butter them up but what you might find is 
We are into July now as well, I've just realised. Uh, if we just go into our Intrigue and we can hold a Summer Fair, will cost us a little bit of gold, uh, but that will mean that we'll get a little bit more of a reputation bonus with some of those vassals, and they'll probably help to push that uh, that law through. So we have got over the 20-minute mark, but because we haven't really done an awful lot in this video, we'll just carry on uh, a little bit longer, get a few more minutes out of it, hopefully get that law to pass through. Okay, so what we can do here, uh, an errant monk is disturbing the summer fair by preaching about sins and the end of the world. His drivel is frightening for some, but most of the crowd around him are mocking and laughing at him. So we can either lose five piety and a bishop, who I think is the the Bishop of Canterbury, so that's the guy that's down in Kent. Um, his opinion of us would drop by... 10 for five years or we can gain 10 piety but it would increase the local revolt risk local revolt risk isn't normally a problem let's go and have some free piety why not it's not all that useful this early on in the game but it certainly can't uh, hurt to have any uh, what's our chancellor's chance of improving the relationships it is 16.2 percent yearly which isn't massive the peddlers are loading their wares and the merchants are taking down their stalls. The jugglers, strolling players and the other entertainers preparing to leave. The summer fair is over for this year. Uh, it was great fun while it lasted. Gain 10 prestige. So hasn't helped us out all that much. What we're going to need to do is um, probably hold a great feast. H holding a great feast will be a little bit more expensive, uh, but that will certainly help uh, increase our... Um, reputation with the vassals individually uh, you do have to have a, i think it's 100 prestige before you can even have a feast yeah you need 25 gold and um month needs to be november can't be in hiding and has to have a prestige of at least 100 well we've got the prestige there we go we're in november we shall hold the feast i've given the orders for a great feast to be hosted in leicester let the preparations begin all of my vassals will be there hopefully apart from the ones that don't like us which will probably tell us to sod off so we'll have to wait and see what happens there so what we're going to start doing is we will start fabricating claims on some of these uh, smaller little pockets of the country uh, that we can gobble up without uh, too much of a problem. We're not going to go straight ahead and start trying to uh, attack uh, N uh, Northumbria, for example, because they're massive. So we'll start with the small guys. Um, my liege, I write to you with bad news from Lincoln. My efforts to squeeze some extra taxes out of the population have met with resistance and the peasants are arming themselves. I fear we might have a revolt on our hands soon. Those troublesome peasants. Puts the local revolt risk up. Still not too worried about it. They may revolt, but I don't think it's going to be an absolutely massive issue. We'll keep our eye on it. We'll deal with it if we need to. Revolt risk is up to 5%, but it's not too bad. The best part about preparing a feast is deciding what foodstuff to serve. I must purchase venison, boar and duck, spices, wine and ale, honey for the desserts, cheese and perhaps even a swan or a peacock. I will spend lavishly on the food. It'll cost me 20 gold, but I'll gain 10 prestige. I can spend just enough to satisfy everyone's hunger and gain 10 gold. Or I can choose not to spend much on food. I'll only lose 5 gold and lose 5 prestige. I don't really need the prestige desperately at this point. Every little bit does help, but there are easier ways to get it. Let's just spend the 10 gold for now. We're not making a huge deal of money, so it seems a little bit pointless spending a lot. I've been spending more time with my wife, Jabera, lately, and through... Um, Though, of course, we did not marry for love, I can tell it is growing between us. So we actually get uh, an opinion boost between each other, which is nice. When I opened the door, I saw no one. But as I stepped aside to close, a group of acrobats cartwheeled, somersaulted and tumbled in. They performed all sorts of tricks and everyone watching exploded into applause when they finished. You would be perfect for my feast. Lose 100 gold or get out. What do you think you're doing? Lose 100 prestige. Well, we don't want to lose prestige and we do have a little bit of money to spare. So most of the preparations for the feast have been made. Now I only have to send out the invitations to my vassals. And as you can see, it looks like we've got about mm, 10 people on the invite list. They may not all come though. So dear King Unstable, I thank you for your invitation, but I will not be able to attend the feast. In fact, I refuse to set my foot in the same castle as you. Respectfully, Mayor Burnwolf. I don't know you either. And there's another one. And a third one. So three people have decided not to turn up. Um... Our chaplain has managed to increase relations with the uh, bishopric here in Leicester. And we've managed to improve the soldier count in Leicester. That is all fantastic. How are things with the uh, bishopric now? Let's have a look. So he actually now um, likes me a fair bit. He actually likes me more than he likes the um, Pope. So he's going to be paying me for a little while. So we'll leave it going. The, we'll wait until the feast is finished. Once the feast is finished, we'll end this video and we'll uh, 
We'll call that a good place to put a cup. So the guests have finally arrived. All uh, all is ready. The cooks have worked day and night preparing the food, and the castle has never looked lovelier. Welcome to my feast. So we'll let everybody in. Obviously, it looks like this feast is going to go on for, for absolutely days. Let's just dismiss some of these messages while not an awful lot else is going on. The acrobats performed somersaults, cartwheels, and tumbles with great skill during the course of the feast. One of them arrived in a chest seemingly too small to hold a person, but he showed us how he, by distorting his body, could fit into the chest. And that their skills are fascinating but unsettling. We gained 10 prestige just because of that. Um, Earl Bernos' plate was uh, still almost as full when the acrobats had finished their performance and he applauded almost fanatically with a blissed look in his eyes. So his opinion of us changes by plus 10 for 10 years. So as you can see, it's well worth holding these feasts because you do get some uh, some nice stuff from it. Let's have a quick look at laws. Still only got six people that are uh, voting for, which is taking their time. Um, oh, again, another 10 prestige from that. Uh, another guy like the acrobats. And everybody leaves and gets plus 10 opinion for two years. So you would hope that um, these opponents would by now actually start voting towards that. They probably will eventually. It will take some time. We will have to build up our reputation. But I'm going to end the video here because we're well over the 20 minute mark now. Thanks a lot for watching guys. As I say this first video has been a little bit slow because we had to do all the initial setup. But as we start moving on into the series things are going to get a lot faster. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, goodbye for now.